out, you could potentially be in a spot where you could go to five and five, and maybe even dodge a tiebreaker against Matt if you win every single game. And for Pentanet too, it's not just about playing spoiler to Cloud9, it's about wanting to get a win here in the damn Rumble stage, Absolutely. right? You've got three games left to play. You've got this one against Cloud9, and then tomorrow, you're up against PSG Talon, who has been definitely performing better than Cloud9, and you're up against Domwon, who's been definitely performing better than PSG, who's been definitely performing better than Cloud9. This is their best remaining chance to get that win on the board, to leave this stage and leave this competition with that win under their belt, and I'm sure they're going to be fighting for it. So let's see how it shakes out in the draft. We've got Lucian and Lee Sin banned out by Pentanet okay. over on the other side. It'll be Thresh and Nar. The third ban on the side of Pentanet is Varus. Makes a lot of sense there as Ven performed incredibly well on it. The fudge has been incredible on Lee Sin. You can also see some pretty strong performances from Perks on the Lucian. You know, these are, are three of those comfort picks. You take away uh, the Udyr here. So I'm gonna be interested, what will Blabber go to? I mean, Morgana would be the expected answer, but he has looked much less comfortable on the Morgana pick here. Yep. If you lock in Nautilus, one thing I will say, normally you're like, well, you're, they're, they already got their jungler, so who cares? But you could actually take the Morgana as a support and really kind of push down Blabber as far as the jungle tier list, plus have a great matchup into the Nautilus. If I'm PGG, swing for the fences here. I would absolutely do that. They're instead going to go for the Tom Kench. Understandable, okay. send a TK is a great lane there, but could have been cool to see. Try to throw a little bit of a wrench in the gear here from Blabber. I'm expecting that they will now grab the Morgana for themselves and we'll have parity across the picks. If they do not feel comfortable on it, they could still go towards the Bali or something like that. You know, go towards something that they're a, a little bit more or Lilia too. And wow, it is Lilia okay. here. So this, okay. So a lot, a lot of people are going to be critical of this. A lot of people are going to say Lilia is trash. This isn't the meta. What I will say is that the meta has not always worked out for NA teams. I feel that often when our best teams go to international play, they try to imitate what they see, you know, the top team or the perceived top team doing, and they just end up doing a worse version of it. Personally, I am, am okay with, with a team going towards what they believe their player is more adept on, right? And yeah. Lilia is something that Blabber played all year long. A well-played Lilia is better than a poorly played Morgana or a poorly played Rumble. So, you know, from that sort of point of view, I think this makes sense. They still want an AP jungler to be able to go towards physical damage solo laners. Yeah. So from that point of view, I'm fine with it. But is it the ideal pick in the meta? No. Morgana and Rumble are both probably stronger. Uh, but at the end of the day, comfort over meta, in my opinion. Okay, so the Jace banned out here by Pentanet, also removing the Yone, which has been a powerful pick for perks in the past. Syndra banned out, Urgot banned out, and Cloud9 will give the huh. last pick of the entire draft over to Perks as they lock in the Scion for Fudge. You know, I honestly thought that he might have just gone Trist uh, because they already banned out Syndra, but given that there are a lot of assassins that Chaz likes to play, maybe Perks didn't feel comfortable blinding Trist knowing that it could be into a Zed or a Kiana. Right. Um, but Trist is just such a good pick in the meta and also such a good pick for Perks. So I would be pretty okay with him just slapping it down either way. In this case, it will be safety up on the top side uh, with the Scion and with the Victor coming through I think you just go Trist you have an AP jungler Perks has been exceptional on it I think it makes a lot of sense Zoe works as an AP option I just think you need to have agency for Perks this is something I was I was kind of tweeting about and have been talking about a fair bit yeah we've is been that, talking about this all morning exactly you know for, for me Perks and there it is again it's, it's the same conversation with Blabber it's like is Victor Oriana meta are they strong picks yes to both has Perks been performing as well in those picks as he does on the aggressive no, not at all, right? Perks is absolutely world-class on these aggressive champions. I love the shirt, O's number one. <laughs> to, to me, it's about him being on a champion in which he has individual agency. Uh -huh. When Perks can, can throw the alley-oop to himself, he is really, really good. He wants to be able to say, all right, you step too, too far forward. I'm going to kill you now. I'm going to get something done by myself. Whereas, you know, when he's playing the Victor and the Oriana, you're more the follow-up. You're waiting for someone to set you up. Then you're kind of coming in after that. When he's playing the Trist, the Zoe, the Yone, the Lucian, these types of picks, he can make it happen for himself. And that is where I think Perks is really in his comfort zone here. So critics be damned. I think this is a good draft for Cloud9. 
even if it is not the most meta draft. We'll see if they can perform on it here. Pentanet playing much more standard uh, as far as the composition goes than what we are kind of used to seeing from them. You know, there, there's no crazy assassins. There's no uh, really wild picks up on the top side. You have Set, you have Udyr, you have Victor. This is scaling for them. This is late game. This is 5v5. So they're going to have to be able to match Cloud9 in that regard if they want to be able to win because none of these picks are surprising. None of these picks are a curveball. You've got to be able to match your opponents blow for blow, you know, on the map as far as the macro play, as far as the laning. And we'll see if Pentanet can pull off the upset here against Cloud9. And what that tells me is Pentanet thinks that this is a team that they can approach head on like that, right? Mm -hmm. If you're picking crazy wild stuff and you're playing a crazy wild game, it's because you're up against opponents like Domwon or like RNG that you're just looking at the nameplates and going, all right, we got to do something wacky. Against Cloud9, they're saying, hey, this is the other team that's low in the standings with us. If there's anybody we can go head to head with, it's got to be these guys. And they're willing to actually put up or shut up on that line. And I like that from Pentanet here. So we'll see how they can make this work. Everybody's just drawing that line of scrimmage here at the start. Doesn't look like we're going to get any invades. If we do, they will be late invades, mm -hmm. but nobody's clumped up. Normally the late invade is like the three person invade with the bottom lane and the jungler together yeah. just as that small squad, but neither side is doing that. So it's looking pretty uneventful here before the minion spawn. Minions. Yep, absolutely. When you are looking at the lanes, you're expecting perks to have prio mid. You're expecting Bio Panther on the other side to have prio up in that top lane set. Does exceptionally well into tanks, and Bio Panther will be spotted out. Didn't? Oh, he actually, wow. Uh, that lasted longer than I thought it was going to. I thought he would have had the level Q, to be honest, to be able to get that, but because he was right on top of it, has that passive for the quick autos with the 1 2, does knock it yeah, down. And now Fudge kind of has to walk the long way around, to be honest, to get back to lane, because now you know that Bio Panther could just be camping in that brush. So. Uh, he does actually go all the way down to Raptors to leash. So, you know, sacrificing himself a little bit, he knows he's going to be sitting under his tower mostly. So he goes, you put the Q down on the Raptors. That makes it a rocket fast start here. Blabber is going Raptors to Krugs. So this is the clear that you do when you're looking for the maximum respawn time on these little camps, on these AoE camps where Lilia really right. excels. So you take the red as your third camp, you do these camps faster to get the respawn going, and it actually allows you to get the fastest level five, fastest level six, because you can then come back and take these Raptors and Crux immediately on respawn. And those are the camps that Lilia really loves to be farming. And down here, it's already scrappy in bottom lane with auto attacks being traded back and forth as early as level one. A yes, little sir. bit of a difference here between support summoner spells. Exhaust for decoy, ignite for Vulcan. I mentioned this in one of the previous games talking about champions like Kaisa like Tristana, exhaust is so important against these AD carries that are willing to dive in and jump on you. So when you're against both of them, it's the choice you got to make. Nice save there from Decoy with the Devour, making sure Prey to stay safe. Yep, and Vulcan knows that that's going to come through. You can notice he was already walking back pretty much as soon as he hooked. Yeah. He knows that the Gobble's going to be there, but you do get that Devour out. You pressure Prey to a little bit here. You know, Senna does have the range advantage very heavily over Zven. You also have the advantage that you don't have to farm as this support Senna, fasting right. Senna, whatever you want to call it. So every time Sven steps up to actually take an auto, you try to auto him as he's trying to auto the minion. And that's kind of the pattern you're looking for. Kaisa is fairly low range, so it does become difficult. So it's up to Nautilus to actually pressure and try to threaten the Senna so that Senna doesn't just get to sit there and free auto nonstop the whole time. Well, here we go. Devour comes out, saves Praetor yet again. Now, once more, that long cooldown will be activated. Will try to dive. Abu makes his way up towards the top lane here, as Bio Panther will have this wave just about ready to crash into the turret. We'll have to clear the next yeah. wave out first. Now, Pabu's here waiting. There's no Krugs for him to steal away. You can see the yellow they hourglass on the map means they will be respawning here very soon. On my way ping, coming out from Blabber, saying he'll head to the chicken camp now, then probably up to the Krugs. And Pabu is backing it's away. taking too long. Yeah, there's not a dive to really be made here. It's still Scion too, which means he comes back to life. So it's very likely he'll be able to trade one back against you unless everybody's willing to just go all the way in with the flashes and you're perfectly coordinated. Mm -hmm. They decide it's too risky. Pabu's back out. And Blabber is doing exactly what you described earlier, clearing back through those camps a second time. Exactly. As soon as they're up, you kill them off immediately. You get back up there. You just power up your clear speed as fast as possible. And Pabu, to his credit, it's possible that he was just protecting against what he believed to maybe be a risky spot for Bio Panther. Yeah. You know, if you are pushing up there, maybe he's like, oh, Blabber's going to come and try to look for a play here. Of course, nothing did result. Not able to take away any camps. Didn't have a respawn up just yet on the Krugs. 
And Perks here, pressuring by kind of holding that wave back. He maintains uh, his TP advantage. CS about even, but there's more for him to farm and everything going pretty much about uh, expected to plan. I would say the fact that Scion is this close in farm is actually really good uh, for Fudge right now. The only problem is he has no mana and he needs to reset the wave. And Blabber's on the other side of the map. So he wants to walk this in, but if you get into an extended trade, he knows he's not going to be able to do much. So Bio Panther. Oh, he kind of killed off too much. Honestly, he messed it up for the freeze if he if he wanted to freeze at all. Maybe he didn't, but you need to leave at least four range minions there. And he actually only left three, so it's going to stack and push towards Fudge. So I do think Bio Panther has, has actually mismanaged the wave uh, a decent amount here. Fudge will TP back, and they're looking for perks. Okay, we got a 3v3 here in mid lane, but Chaz is the one taking the most damage here with the explosive shot as well as that bowling ball from Lilia. He will be down to half HP and no mana. It's time to head back to base, but of course the teleport will mean a swift return back to the mid lane mm -hmm. here as C9 rotates their AD carry over to the Drake pit here. Blabber's down there as well to facilitate this take. Vulcan is nearby, clearing out enemy vision, placing down some of his own just to make sure Pentanet can't contest this. And it's a very early uncontested Drake for Cloud9. Yep, very slow, very controlled. Vulcan looking for an opportunity here on Chaz. If he steps forward, could get hooked. Uh, but the fact that Fudge is six now, he already got the Bramble on the first base. It's, it's pretty important to be playing from ahead as the set. You really want to be bullying. Uh, the fact that Bio Panther didn't hold the freeze, that the wave is pushing back towards his opponent, I think is rough. This is just a move to actually push out the wave. Chaz, I think, wants to be able to shove perks back. That's more of a harass ultimate than actually looking for any sort of real play. Something very common with Victor is just to use that ulti uh, for the wave control. Papa will be heading back up towards top, but again, there's been no trading on towards Fudge. The wave is pushing towards him. He's full health. You can't really dive. And even if Fudge gets pushed back, he has the ulti now post level six. If Blabber's coming down, they're looking for a play. All right, Decoy is the one targeted here Blabber's at six. the start. Blabber's ready to go. Flash in. Ready with the sleep. The Devour is used, TP. but the TP's coming down. Decoy's still got the thick skin ready to go. Blabber at about two-thirds HP, but the TP is canceled. And with a cancel, that means they can turn it right back around. Decoy running away. Thick skin keeps him alive. Cloud9 will not be able to make the play. Good defense coming out from Pentanet. Yeah, good defense for them, but still a positive play from Cloud9 because they get the TP out from top. They get three summoners out from bot there. Yes, Blabber did trade out his flash, but still going to be a positive play for them. They have the health advantage, so they actually take a play off of the back of that. And things looking pretty darn good here for Cloud9 as far as the 2v2 goes. A slight gold lead, though, over the side of Pentanet. You know, Senna really can kind of inflate that because you're collecting so much gold with his Spectral Scythe here. Yeah. And it's really important that Fudge stopped Bio Panther's teleport. Yes. If that completes with how far forward Cloud9 was, with how low on resources both health and mana Blabber was, almost a guaranteed kill if Bio Panther shows up down there. So nice interrupt from Fudge, guaranteeing that can't happen. It's still such a close game between these two teams. And if Pentanet was able to grab themselves one or two kills there in the bottom lane, get them on the right people, this game could be looking very good for them in the early stages. Absolutely especially because Fudge actually used his TP back to the top. So he had no option to match. He had to interrupt. You know, your, your ulti is not going to get you down there. But you can see, all things considered, pretty even some slight gold leads uh, for the Pentanet side. And you can see that Senna was about three, 400 gold up on Vulcan. Yes, that matters. But at the end of the day, the support items aren't capped on how much gold you can get, right? So you hit that 1K mark, it turns off. And that is the thing that Nautilus will be behind early, but will eventually get that 1,000 gold all the same. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about with a little bit of the early inflation that this shows. And you can see Perks there jumping in, unloads the explosive shot, fires off the ulti just to guarantee that Chaz is as low as possible. He knows that Victor no longer has a teleport, so chunking him down far enough will cause him to lose a lot of resources here in the mid lane. However, Praetith has rotated over here. He will now be able to handle this. Victor rotates over to the blue buff to take that one from Pabu to replenish all of this lost mana. He is completely out of that resource, so giving him this will do a lot to continue allowing him to have a decent lane against mm -hmm. Perks here, who you know wants to continue being this aggressive on the Tristana. And this is what you were talking about in Champ Select, my friend. We want to see Perks on champions that are allowed to let him shine. We want to see Perks being the dude who you can just say, give him the ball and let him run. 
because if he's on these Orianas and he's on these Victors, it's not the same as on a playmaker like a Tristana. Yeah, he is the kind of player that has extreme levels of confidence, where he knows if you step too far, he's going to kill you. He can find the outplay. He can look for it. And you know, most of his career highlights are on those types of champions. When you think about the LeBlanc plays, the Akali, the Silas, you know, the Aurelia, the Yasuo, all these aggressive champions that really have the ability to outplay their opponents. PGG looking to contest here. And oh. Blabber in some trouble. Flash Bear Slap coming out. Good by Blabber. First blood over to Pentanet. Cloud9 has to retreat now as the Rift Herald will be earned by the Oceanic team. Big for them. They get the Sen ulti coming across. That gets them the first blood, but they're going in. Oh, Chaz a bit too far forward here with the explosive shot about to pop. Chaz survives with under 100 HP and Perks has to flash away. Vulcan takes a little bit of extra damage here on the back end of the fight from a double buff Praetith who managed to take those from all the way across the map with the Senna ulti for the first blood. And things are looking pretty darn good for Pentanet. Yeah, Pentanet's doing a really good job here. You know, this has been a very slow game uh, as far as the kills are concerned. It's not a brawl like a lot of the other ones. Zven, you probably got a flash here. He could get chased yep. down. He flashes away to make sure that he stays safe here. Ulti and flash. Yeah. Both expended. Nicely done from Decoy. Yep, really nicely done there. Drops the exhaust. He slowed down. No ability to really kite back because no one was behind him. They knew that Vulcan was just in mid lane, had gone back to base. They had killed off Blabber. They saw perks. So they know where everyone is, right? And that allows you as the Tom Kench to just go for this sort of play where you're just running at the AD with your early tabbies. Can't really hurt you too much. And as a result, we'll be able to force that summoner. Nicely done. Pretty slow, controlled game here. Pentina in a good spot, and it's going to come down really to how they can play out the later stages. You know, how can you match up in the 5v5? How can you play the map uh, overall? You know, the gold is close. Uh, the objectives have been traded. You know, Herald over to PGG, Dragon over to Cloud9. And we can watch this one more time. Cloud9 had mid prio, so I think they're like, yeah, we could go for this. But the problem is the Tom Kench ulti bringing up the extra member was something that Cloud9, I think, really did not consider. Zven was not going to move, so it turns it into you know, this odd number fight where they're able to hard engage, find the fight. Cloud9 here back towards the dragon. This setup is looking like there's no chance of a contest. Udyr is yeah. up towards the top side. They pushed in mid as a squad. They group up. They grab this. And it's going to be either Infernal or Ocean. Both are absolutely primo dragons Infernal there. Soul. So Infernal Soul with double ADC, you know, that's a lot of extra AD. They will be dropping the Herald top here. So they're going to increase their gold lead. Uh, this should just be a full straight up tower. Turret. Yeah, I mean, yeah. set crushes turrets uh, with the passive, the 1 2 plus the Q for the auto reset. The Herald comes down, so they get the gold lead, but not that concerning just yet. Okay, Vulcan's going in. Decoy will be the target, but with the Swirl Seed not connecting, Cloud9's play is stopped right now, but Praetith having to flash away now. He steps too far forward with the Devourer on cooldown. Remember how long that cooldown is for Tom Kench early on like this. Yeah. So Praetith having to spend the summoner spell there. Exactly. He wanted to get some harass on the way back, you know, steal some souls, get the double autos. A lot of the soul stacking is so important for Senna, especially, you know, in this type of role when you are playing the fasting Senna. You can see 57 already. Yeah. Quite a good mark because it is a low range AD. You know, it is this. Nautilus, who his only recourse really is to engage, but then you have the Tom Kench behind you, so you can position very aggressively and stack that up. And that's going to be critical because, you know, once the, the Spectral Sickle turns off, yeah. you're really getting a lot of your power by just stacking up as many souls as fast as possible, hitting those range benchmarks where you can really poke away and prod at these marksmen who will have much higher consistent DPS, but much lower range, and you'll have that ability to poke and try to deny them from even getting that committed fight. You can see that Spectral Sickle at 891 out of 1,000 yeah. total earned gold. So about 90% of the way there in terms of that gold generation before the thing shuts off. So Noon Quiver, the extra components there for the Mythic item now added on as well. So Praetith getting close to that first completion. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, on the other side, double Kraken Slayers are already yeah. done for Cloud9. However, as a team, they're still 2,000 gold behind here 14 minutes in. Yeah, they are falling pretty far behind in the gold. We'll see if this does even out over the next couple minutes. PGG likely going to be looking to contest at this next dragon. I don't think you want to give up three straight. Double Kraken makes a lot of sense here, though. There's a huge amount of frontline when you're looking over. Bio Panther is going to be really tanky. The Udyr is going to be very tanky. So is the Tom Gench, who is a farmer here. Oh, so yeah. The on hit, that true damage coming through is big. This is a big LDR game. 
Yeah. He's yeah. 80 carries. This item will be so powerful. You might even see it second, to be honest. Yeah. I would I would totally understand if they went for this item second, considering how big these three meatballs are going to be on the front line. You can't just walk past them. It's set in Udir. Even if they're building tanky, they have a very high natural damage mm -hmm. threat against these squishy champions. So Cloud9 continuing to try to just make sure the gold doesn't get any further away from them. Two minutes until that Drake does spawn. I'm also expecting Pentanet to want to fight for this one. Generally, giving away the first two isn't that big of a deal for most teams. After you give away the first one, you don't care too much about the second, but then number three means a lot. Blabber will continue to have some Scuttle Crab control over here in the bottom half of the map. Vulcan standing on top of a ward, so there won't be any plays to be made here just yet. But there are four men from Cloud9 in this bottom side river, and look at all the vision they're placing around here, Azale. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just such an obvious focus. Both teams are going to know it. So it comes down to the setup. You know, PGG have played a really strong early game. They have had a couple showings where they have been able to keep it close in games like this. Most of theirs have kind of turned into a lot of brawls and it either goes their way or it doesn't, but it's kind of decided quick. This is one of those games where, hey, it's going to come down to the more complex parts of the game. It's more than just scrapping and kills. It's about team fighting. It's about setup. It's about macro play. And they are looking to show that they are equal to the task here against Cloud9. Pabu did get spotted out by that ward, so Vulcan and Sven will back it up. The Flash is back here for Sven, but he's got to be a little bit careful. And yeah. So he does run it back, and this is probably going to be about the timing for any final resets that you want to go for. You want to be at maximum power here. We'll see if Flabber does have his Leandries on this base. That's the last player missing a Mythic over on the Cloud9 side, excluding the supports, of course, which just don't really get them that early. So right. Cloud9 are well set up. They have a really beefy front line with the Scion as well as the Nautilus. They have the AP damage with this Leandries on the Lilia, and they have double Marksman with their Tier 2 boots plus the Kraken Slayer. So they are set up for success, but there's a lot of power over on the PGG side, as well as the potential for some playmaking here with maybe a flank or something coming through from Bile Panther. But I do think if PGG just try to run straight at Cloud9, it's going to be tough because the front line can buy time with the Scion here and your double Marksman has the potential to really punch through a lot of those melee champions over on the PGG side. Okay, let's see how this is going to work out with Shelly here in mid lane. Will they be able to grab themselves the entirety of this turret? There's about half the HP. Shelly taking the damage now. Vulcan with the engage here in the dredge line, finding its way on to Chaz, but Vulcan's in danger. Perk's already dead. Make it two for nothing. Pentanet. Huge kills right in time for the Drake to spawn. They'll grab the mid lane turret. They'll take the Drake too. This is looking awesome for this team. Yeah, that is huge for them. It, I'm not sure. It, Perks, I think, got flash ulted back into the team there by Bio Panther. He just went down in a hurry, and they tried to posture very aggressively, looking for the engage, but the whole team wasn't there, and that was really ill-advised for a Cloud9. And now, if you are a Cloud9 fan, you start getting really nervous because we have kind of passed that one major advantage that they had. They're looking for a play here. Bio Panther has no flash. Bio Panther, the one taking a lot of damage here with the very start, goes for the Haymaker. Perks jumps on top of him to guarantee they get it done, but it's Blabber taking the kill, and 17 minutes in, C9 finally get a kill on the board. Yeah, good punish there. They knew he spent the flash, so they TP down, they get the kill. Cloud9 still have good scaling, but Pentanet showing that they are not messing around in this game, playing it out very well, searching for their first win in this group. They have good scaling of their own. You know, Senna, yeah. Victor, no joke whatsoever. I do favor the Cloud9 side, but still, they can absolutely play this out correctly, and, and they can take this game. I mean, they have 80 stacks already of the miss over on Praetith. That is a ton. Cloud9 going to close that gold gap up a little bit. But still, it's Pentanet in control. It's them that slowed down that Dragon stack. I mean, that was the major concern. That was the major advantage over on the Cloud9 side was if they get that third Dragon really quick, all of a sudden, you're, you're staring down a game loss you know, three, four minutes from now. At like 22 minutes, maybe the game is effectively over. Because yep. they stopped it, the very earliest that Cloud9 can really threaten that now is, is nine minutes from now or even later. So, you know, that gives PGG a lot of time to work with. PGG coming down to this bottom lane tier one in mass. Fudge looking for a little bit of interruption here, but won't quite be able to stop anybody from doing what they want to do. Pabu waiting in the brush, just seeing if anybody's going to audaciously face check this. 
And now Pentanet will move fight. forward as a team. Yeah, they're looking to fight over this blue buff. Fudge knocks the buff into them. Swirl Seed fired off. It will be secured by Pabu here as Bio Panther joins up with the rest of the team and Pentanet are feeling confident with their position in this game. And you're talking about how they have scaling. They're able to play this out. They're in a winning position right now. And this goes back to what I thought as soon as I saw them lock in this draft and lock in these picks, they're not going for cheesy, try to surprise oh. them and win. They think that they can Dilbert take Cloud9 on head to head and it's awesome to see. Now, Bio Panther's underneath the tier two turret. He's the one just keeping Fudge away, allowing the rest of the Pentanet players to lay Berks siege is to coming, this structure. Though. They fight. But now they're going in after Chaz. He'll be saved by Decoy, getting himself away now. Cloud9 looking Berks for the plays here, but Blabber is already into the stasis, having to flash away, staying alive. Perks comes in, knocks him right back into the rest of Cloud9, but Cloud9's not ready. Fudge is already dead. Pabu's likely to be traded here, but he gets away. Sven getting the kill there, finally. Perks having to flash back out of the gravity well. One for one here in this chaotic fight. Yeah, but they get the tower as well. That's, that's definitely in the favor of PGG. This is kind of reminiscent to the last double marksman game that Cloud9 played against Dom1, where Perks is just not really grouped with the squad, and their opponents are trying to force, right? That was also a Senna Tom Kemch game, where Perks was actually playing the Lucian, and he just kept going out to the side lanes, getting split from the team, and their opponents would just engage. they say, all right, yeah, push out the wave. Who cares? Because we are going to kill the rest of your team. Yes, Perks did eventually arrive to the fight, but flanking on a marksman just ain't it. It's so rare that you can really make it happen. Decoy flashing in, keeping Chaz safe here. This was a fight with very narrow margins, but Blabber chunked out, Fudge chunked out. They knock him back in, but they don't quite have the damage to actually fill, finish him back off as Pabu is stepping forward, trying to zone. Perks moves in there. Zven had to flash forward for the Q to actually finish off the kill. And then Bio Panther, you know, with the threat, of that clap together into the gravity field forces the flash out of perks so really not getting anything done there as he came in from behind cloud nine still maintaining that 2k gold deficit they are a dragon up here we'll see if they can get this next one and move themselves to soul point but with blabber up on the top side i'm not even sure that they really want to go for it blabber is recalling now Fudge will have to push this wave and then immediately get down towards bot. He does have TP to do so, but right. I mean, Blabber is just staying up here. So it kind of seems like Cloud9 are saying, maybe we can't team fight. So let's assess the state of the items here, knowing that it's under a minute until this Drake is going to spawn and there's probably a fight around it because you have Sven on the two item power spike with a Kraken Slayer and the Phantom Dancer. But however, on the other side, Bio Panther is scary, man. You're up against two marksmen and you've got your Mythic, yep. you've got your Randuins, plated steel caps are ready to go. Udi are working on the Dead Man's plate, so that one will probably be done soon. For Chaz, he has the Archangel Staff fully evolved from the tier. He's got the Luden's Echo ready. There's a lot of big damage potential here on either side. So, so much of this, again, it's coming down to the execution. Yeah, and, it, and it's interesting, right? There's just so much armor being stacked. And if Blabber isn't having a big impact, the fact that he does magic damage doesn't really matter. So Cloud9 are going to be able to, you know, take, uh, rather give over this dragon. They're not actually going to challenge for it. You know, uh, we'll, we'll have to see if it actually becomes true at all that Cloud9 do have the scaling advantage. You know, in the Dom1 game, they kind of clearly did. Uh, this is a bit of a different wrinkle because you do have obviously more of a true front line. It's not just the double enchanters. You have the Lilia as this kind of true AP threat. But, you know, if Blabber is not being able to to really threaten that front line whatsoever, uh, then it gets tough because then the onus is on these marksmen and they're going to be facing down all armor stacking, right? So Blabber has to have a good game because there's no MR being built. It's going to be triple plated steel caps. It's going to be a Randwins. A dead man is going to come through uh, for this Udyr. You can already see Frostfire Gauntlet as well as the Bramble plus the steel caps on the Tom Kench. So, you know, until they get towards the LDR, uh, their damage is going to be limited. You know, they are both on their Kraken Slayer, so obviously trying to maximize damage against tanks here. Blabber now on two items, so we'll see how effective he can be uh, to try to punish the lack of MR over on this team. And I think this this Zonius is so important, right? Because when you go in with Lilia, yes, you have the ability to make the entire enemy team go to sleep, but that sleep takes a second to kick in. And when you have the point and click stun of Udyr with his movement speed that can stay caught up with Lilia, Victor and Senna can just make sure she dies before everybody takes a nap. So having that hourglass, allowing Blabber to play more aggressively and try to set things up for this team, I think it's very important. I like the fact that he went for this. Knight's Vow, second item completed here on Fudge. 
Blabber's approaching from the flank, seeing if he can hit that swirl seed. Finds it onto Decoy, and they're gonna go after it. Drowsy comes through. Now you got Fudge approaching from the flank. Decoy's down to half, but he's still got the thick skin. Blabber's in trouble. Popping that stasis, staying alive. Bio Panther looking for the kills. Ven! He's about to die, and they got the killing spree for Chaz, too. This it's is two kills. It's three kills. It's Pantanet, baby. Let's go. Pantanet coming up huge here. They're going to be able to get the Baron, and this could potentially be the game-ending damage that they need. Cloud9 hard forcing on this engage onto a Tom Kench. They go for the flash hook. That does not connect. They push forward. They pile in. They didn't have close to enough damage here. And Pentanet took what was a close game, absolutely punished Cloud9 on the over-engage, are now over 4,000 gold ahead here, nearing a 5K gold lead. They've evened it up as far as the Dragons go. And Cloud9, you know, are, are in a game that is so important for them to win. They're trying yeah. to TP for the flank here. That's not gonna find anything. You know, this could decide their fate in the entire tournament, losing to a winless team. Pentanet, zero and seven so far in the groups, but it was a very even back and forth early game. And it's actually Pentanet who was outplayed, who was outmatched when it has come down to the team fighting, when it has come down to the macro play. They have been the superior squad. And they're up five thousand gold they are tied in dragons 25 minutes into the game i'm not quite sure how many stacks senate is at hopefully we can check in on that here in a moment just to see exactly what the range that Pradif can exert looks like because pentanet is feeling super good about this 117 stacks so a nice amount of that going on that's here. huge and now we'll see if cloud nine is able to defend against this because pentanet now has the opportunity with two of these tier two turrets still standing in the side lanes to really balloon this gold even further yeah i mean i i think at this point honestly uh you know any any sort of advantages that cloud nine had are, are long gone i feel like they're being outpaced and i think when tanks are this far ahead unless this game goes really long i don't think that they're gonna have enough damage to be relevant okay pabu taking a lot of damage here though a little bit more coming out but it's not enough Udyr's too tanky. Bio Panther teleporting back in now in the middle of four Cloud9 players, putting a lot of CC and a lot of damage into him, but that's set. Blabber finally grabs the kill into Pabu, so at least they're getting the pick up there. Cloud9 bringing in the Scion Choo Choo train, but the train ain't gonna stop at any station anytime soon. Cloud9 take out the enemy jungler, but that's all they're gonna get. It will buy them some time here against the Baron push. Does buy them a little bit of time here. We can watch this one more time. This is the initial play. I mean, I, I just don't understand the force. Uh, when you when you don't connect the, the bowling ball there on both members, when the flash hook does not come through, you know, even if you do hit that hook, like you're you're all inning on the Tom Kench, right? So the response from Pentanet is so good. Bio Panther is there very fast. Pabu is responding very quickly as well. Chaz arrives. They're all there and they are <laughs> popping off. You love the reactions. OCE number one. I They're love looking it. like they are in a position here to take down Cloud9. You can see it on the face of Vulcan there. Frustration seeping in. They know that with the win earlier today, they greatly improved their chances of making it out of the group. And a loss here really erases all that hard work that you had done. Yeah, it just completely throws it away. And now Pentanet Another are dragon. looking to take themselves to Soul Point. Yeah. Remember that it was Cloud9 who had two very early Drakes uncontested, but ever since then, it's Pentanet, it's Pentanet, and in case you missed the memo, it's now Pentanet on Soul Point with three Infernal Drakes, and this composition has some serious damage potential. Yeah. Even though the front line is building all tank, their base damages are very high. Victor is four and zero with three completed major items and an extra needlessly large rod in the inventory. These Infernal Drakes matter absolutely and I mean Senna gets passive AD from every single stack of that mist so you get even more from that as well on the Senna these are some of the best champions to be grabbing that and I'm gonna be honest I just don't see a lot of comeback mechanics for cloud nine you know unless you can see someone that's really over splitting in a side lane really out of position you can't hard engage into the Tom Kench and just all in on one player. It's got to be that more slow measured fight where you're knocking down the front line with your double marksman and then, you know, kind of pushing forward after that. But when you're this far behind the pace of the game, 
as the double marksman team, everyone's stacking armor. Blabber's damage on the Lilia really isn't relevant. It's showing that it's not enough to actually punish any sort of lack of MR. And even we're getting some of that coming into the builds here now for these players. So Cloud9 are in an incredibly bad position at this point with potentially uh, their tournament lives on the line. You know, it's not necessarily the case as they could still win some other games. They don't really know what's going to happen. But Bio Panther threatening the flank. PGG have played a great game so far. And they just need to continue doing what they're doing because they're in full control. And it feels like the game is absolutely well and truly in their hands. Yeah, and we're talking about Cloud9 and the implications of this game and having the ability to potentially have a much better shot if they win here. But I want to talk about Pentanet because this is the team that you already said, you know, they're coming in here 0-7. This is the team that everybody's just been kind of looking at as free wins. And for this region that has never made it past that first stage that up until this tournament was always the play-in stage, they made it through that. Now they're into the Rumble stage, which is equivalent to, you know, main groups in all previous events. And to be able to come here and at least get a win on one of the major region teams, that is awesome for Oceania. That is incredible for these players because of what you were talking about earlier with Oceania, with uh, OPL dissolving and those Oceanic players no longer counting as imports in North America, the players who were perceived as the best were scouted and recruited and signed by the North American teams. And for this squad, for Pentanet to then be able to take down the number one North American team, mm -hmm. damn, is that a cool statement. I mean, it's so huge, right? You know, you've got to feel like you've been overlooked as these Pentanet players counted out. Your league gets dissolved. You're not signed uh, among some of the players that were perceived to be the absolute best from the OPL. And now here you are with Cloud9 at the brink, the game in their hands. Your Baron spawning in 10 seconds. And Pentanet can press the issue. You have so much tankiness here. Look at all the vision, too. Yeah, they have great vision. Uh, they have the ability to, to stay on this Baron pretty much threat-free, honestly, with the Senna sustain as well as all the front line to actually tank that up. So Cloud9 are very likely going to be forced to actually take these fights. They're not going to have the ability to just sit back and scale, to try to wait for IEs, to try to hope that you can get something else done. And Pendanet is pressing that issue. They are on it now. It is spotted here by Cloud9. But again, Perks is in the side lane. He's not even here, and now he's TPing, but will he be there in time? Okay, Baron's below They're half. Still on it. 40%, one third, Cloud9. Now's the time you gotta move. Perks has arrived, Baron is at 4K. Swirl Seed only finds Bio Panther. Cloud9 has to have good target selection. Split. Bad target selection has hurt them pretty badly so far here in the game. Bio Panther goes in, looking to initiate onto everybody. It's a big haymaker. Vulcan's already almost dead. Blabber going in for a big multi-man sleep. Pabu's gonna be taken low, nearly dead now, but not quite yet. Decoy about to fall over. A nice devourer is able to save Praden. Fudge flashing out, staying alive. How in the hell is no one dead on either side? They're so low, but Cloud9 couldn't finish anybody off. That's three, four members. That would have been an enormous fight for them. If you get one or two more autos on these members, that's a Cloud9 team fight and a Baron. Instead, it is just them holding on here. And now a TP coming from the top side. I wonder if Pentanet thinks that they are on the Baron. Yes, I think that is exactly what happened. They were worried about a counter Baron play. So Bio Panther TPs out there. But Cloud9, not quite able to finish it off, just didn't have enough damage in the tank there. That was a ridiculously close fight. Holy cow. And summoners were kind of forced on both sides. You know, the TP obviously critical there. Flashes on both junglers, uh, both top laners are down, but the additional flash is available as Decoy has his, and now this is gonna it's be Infernal time. Infernal Soul. Cloud9 look like they're just gonna give it up. They're gonna try to trade for Baron, but this is so risky. Yeah. What will Pentanet do? Will they be willing to give this up or will they come and contest? It looks like they want to fight for Remember, Pablo has no flash, so he has no way to flash into the pit to get this. They could Buster shot him out and try to finish, and they're going for it. Okay, Baron's down to about 3k. Bio Panther's coming in, looking to fight. Baron down to 2,000 now. Pabu's gonna be zoned away. Blabber looking to take it down. Baron going over to Cloud9. Pabu now here on the front line. Gonna be dredge line right back in. He's taken out first. Bio Panther's into the back, but Sven's gonna stay alive. He cuts back. He gets away. Fudge is finally killed there in the gravity well, but Cloud9 grabs the Baron, and Cloud9 gets themselves out with a two-for-one trade. But can they get back to base and contest the Infernal? That is the critical point here. They gotta get over there and try to stop it, but they're not even basing just yet. And I think it's just gonna be the Infernal over to PGG. So unless Cloud9 can deal lethal damage with this Baron, it's still in the favor of PGG. You have an 
a buff that does not expire. That is so powerful. The amount of poke with this rapid fire Senna and the Infernal Soul. You get one auto plus a Q, you are pushing them out. The sleep from Flavor was so critical though on Bio Panther. When he goes in, look at him going into the back line here later in the fight. He had a fully stacked uh, bar of True Grit here. If he gets a W off, he probably kills Zven and lives. Instead, the sleep came through. He did not get that off. He does go down. Cloud9 win the fight. They get the Baron, but they lose the Infernal Soul. They took down a top turret. They get down a mid turret. So they really have got to get the most they possibly can done in this next 145. It's not a lot of time to work with. Yeah. If this expires and Cloud9 have not gotten a lot more, that play is still really beneficial for Pentanet. And We'll see how close Perks and Zven are to an IE. You have to imagine that's where they're going to. Yeah. Perks has been sitting on this QSS for a very long time. Zven recently picked up the BF, so he's still probably quite a ways off. When they hit the double IE, that's going to be their next big power spike. It's, remember, it's not IE. It's not IE. It's Bloodthirster oh, for Perks. He just bought it. He wow. just bought the Bloodthirster. He values the lifesteal and the shield more than the raw damage. This is interesting. So I, I think the read he is making is that he's actually getting poked out. You know, he's getting hit by a Senna. He's getting hit by a Victor laser, and then he cannot stay in the fight. So if your read is that my lack of damage is due to the inability to actually stay healthy and stay in the fight, I think this is an absolutely fine choice. We'll see if that does pay off for him. And if Zven is going to follow suit, my guess is Zven would for sure go for the IE. Yeah. But we will see where the option is. Perk's getting really, really strong here. He is level 18. On the other side, though, Death Cap is completed. Uh, you got pieces of the Void Staff there for Chaz. So he's closing in on a full item build here as well. It's got to come down to the fights. Cloud9 have got to step up when it matters most if they want to pull this game back from the Jaws of Defeat. Because 30 seconds on the Baron, that's pretty much done and dusted. So yeah. PGG are going to be equal on gold. You got that from your Baron. But they have Infernal Soul, which is worth thousands and thousands of gold at this point in the game, adding in tremendous amounts of AD on the Senna. You can see 312 AD on the Senna uh, with just the one AD item purchased up. Chaz with a death cap is going to have an enormous amount of AP as well. So Cloud9 have to execute perfectly, have to really be able to pull this one out. And with 174 souls, he's just about to his next That's range insane. stack as well. So Praetith incredibly scary. Ooh, nine could be in trouble. Champion Pabu eating a lot of damage here, but not enough to actually threaten They're his split. life. They could be in trouble. Cloud Nine is not in a good spot. They're trying to get away, but Decoy with the flash over the wall. He's coming in. C9 wants to use the double TP, TP and join up. Zven's about to die to the chaos storm here. One more tick gets him. It's Chaz with a big Chad play as Fudge is now in the middle of five, and he ain't gonna last much longer. Pentanet is not looking for dessert. They send Fudge home. And now they've got themselves a 5v3. Make it a 5v2, excuse me, as Perks tries to make some sort of a stand, but he will not be able to find it here just yet. Jumps back up the wall to game. escape the gravity well. Pentanet on the victory push down the bottom lane. Again, Cloud9 are split, and Pentanet find the engage. Perks is up to him, but he can't do it. Perks can't do a thing about it. He's shut down. Chaz takes the kill, 7-0 and 3 here on the victor. It is Blabber against Pentanet. He has to wait at least 10 seconds to get Sven back. TP coming in, Pentanet wants to end the game here. It's Vulcan and Blabber trying to hold the line a little bit longer. Sven finally coming back alive. Blabber's gonna be killed, Chaz legendary. Chaos Storm finding a double kill. Chaz has it, Pentanet has it. Sven doesn't have it. He's chased back, he's probably gonna be killed. Ladies and gentlemen, Oceania will not go silent into the night. They will find their first win of the Rumble stage, and they will defeat Cloud9. And what a win it is, straight up. No trickery here from Pentanet. They outfought, they out macroed in a game here against Cloud9. They picked their moments, they found their fights. Cloud9 not equal to the task. Pabu and the rest of the team have got to be so happy. A really strong performance from them across the board. They matched and then excelled. They went beyond what Cloud9 was able to do. And Cloud9, again, with this double marksman comp falling short, being punished by being split in the critical moment again. They are not together. The three-man squad is heavily pushing up, I assume, to try to get vision there in the bottom lane, but I mean, there's no objectives on the map. There's no reason to be that far out. By the time Perks and Fudge arrive, it was already over. 
and Cloud9 are really now in a terrible position to try to get out of this group and Pensionet have got to be elated representing their region so incredibly well. Yeah. The first OCE team to get beyond that initial stage. They get to the second round. They've shown so much swagger, so many fun picks. And here they are just straight up beating Cloud9 here, the number one team from the LCS, where so many of their players have gone, showing they are not to be ignored, looking to play spoiler, and they just very well may have done that. What a hell of a day for Oceanic players. Fudge becomes the MVP of Cloud9 as they take down RNG in an upset, and then the entire team of Oceanic players takes down Fudge and the North American squad. What an awesome showing from these guys, and with with how good their attitude has been, with how lovable these guys have been in the games, just always throwing crazy stuff against the wall, seeing what's going to stick, rising to the challenge, and meeting Cloud9 in open battle, and just saying, we'll beat you, and then doing it? That's incredible. From Pentanet, these guys absolutely deserve the win. An update on the Cloud9 situation after this game, Cloud9 is not yet mathematically eliminated. No. However, what they are eliminated from is moving on to the next stage without a tiebreaker. If they want to advance, a tiebreaker is the only way to do it with this loss to Pentanet. So doing their job, playing spoiler, like you said. Incredible showing from the O's boys here once again. And now let's look back at some of the moments here in this game that led to Pentanet's first win in the Rumble stage. And the drive to victory presented by Mercedes-Benz, we got the mid lane fight that led to the Baron. I mean, this one was just huge. Really bad over for us from Cloud9. You know, pushing forward, committing ultimate on just the Tom Kench. You know, committing so many spells on just the Tom Kench. And Bio Panther, I think he has been the standout member for the team. Pretty much all tournament long has been really, really strong. Getting into the back line, knocking down Zven, pushing out multiple members. And just such a strong set performance, honestly, from him. I think the early laning phase, he didn't really create a lot of advantages. But when it came time to team fight, he was always where he needed to be. He was collapsing to join the team much faster. And at the end of the day, that was the difference maker. Pentanet was together when they needed to be. Cloud9 was often caught split apart and punished so heavily for it. And that's it from us. That's it for the second to last day of MSI. We're heading to a break here one more time. But after that, we're going to wrap up the day and look forward to that final day of competition tomorrow on the MSI Cooldown. Don't go anywhere.